Okay, so this week we do actually have upgraded audio. Starting off the news this week, scientists have discovered evidence that the core of the Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy, had a cataclysmic explosion around three and a half million years ago. The energy flare has been named the Seyfert Flare and challenges current beliefs and understandings of the Milky Way. It has historically been regarded as a relatively inactive galaxy, but this new discovery reveals an explosion that was so big it had to have been triggered by nuclear activity from the gigantic black hole in the centre of the galaxy, named Sagittarius A. The way that scientists discovered this past event is by looking at evidence found in the Magellanic Stream, a stream of gas that is on average 200,000 light years away from the Milky Way. In other news, a study this week has been published in the journal Biological Conservation warning that emperor penguins will need greater protection as the climate warms. One forecast that is given is that by 2100 the emperor penguin population could be halved. Researchers will be submitting a proposal to the International Union for Conservation of Nature or IUCN to change the conservation status of emperor penguins from near threatened to vulnerable. While they have been described as very resilient birds, the researchers are still concerned just how long they will be able to fight on against the changing environment. Starting off the paleontology news this week is the intriguing report on the first skeletal remains of an ancient shark relative genus that has, before now, only been known from teeth. Fibodus teeth have been found all over the world, and now the first body fossils are known, revealing that this prehistoric fish actually resembled the living frilled shark in many ways due to the specialised anatomy they both developed, presumably as a result of similar feeding habits. Fibodus has been placed as a stem elasmobranch, the group that contains sharks and rays, meaning that the date of origin for this group can actually be pushed back further in time, with the point at which elasmobranchs split from their relatives now thought to have occurred 10 million years earlier in the Middle Devonian. Also in the news, the most complete pterosaur ever found in Australia has been named and described this week. Welcome Ferradraco Lentoni, a Cretaceous age pterosaur that has been classified as an ornithochirid. The name means Lenton's Iron Dragon, and it likely would have had a wingspan reaching about 4 metres. Despite being the most complete pterosaur found in the country so far, only about 10 or 11% of the skeleton is known, but this has still allowed paleontologists to determine its evolutionary relationships. Finally, an interesting paper determining the extinction of mammoths has also been published. The very last population of woolly mammoths lived on Wrangell Island in the Arctic Ocean, and only died out about 4,000 years ago, and so this new study has examined carbon, nitrogen, and sulphur isotopes from various mammoth bones in order to figure out the exact cause of death of the last mammoths. No sign of habitat or foraging deterioration was actually found in the isotope levels, but instead there seems to have been increased weathering of rock formations in the mountains on the island during the mid-Holocene. The researchers have therefore suggested that much more short-term events could have been to blame for the extinction, such as water quality issues due to the increased weathering or a disastrous period of starvation. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already to learn more about the wonderful life surrounding you. And if you have, we'll see you on Sunday.